Hi, everybody. It's Jessica Stone at Stansberry Research, and I'm joined now by Health and Wealth Bulletin's Amanda Kowochi. Uh, Amanda, we've been seeing a lot uh, more research about the connection between obesity and COVID-19 outcomes, and particularly seeing more young people hospitalized or even dying because they're obese, and yet that hasn't been identified as a risk factor until more recently. Why is obesity such a high risk factor for complications? With COVID-19. So this is a great uh, topic to study right now, um, especially because, as you mentioned, we're seeing more and more younger people succumbing to the disease because, and obesity is one of the risk factors there. Um, so there's really four things we're looking at. Uh, the first is that with excess weight, you're putting more pressure on the diaphragm, and that's the muscle right under your lungs that moves up and down as you breathe. So if you're having respiratory trouble, already having an excess strain on that um, can lead to you know, worse lung function. So that's an issue. Um, fat cells actually are inflammatory. They release all these chemicals in our body that trigger you know, inflammation, which is terrible and really puts a strain on the immune system. And in addition to that, uh, you know, excess weight also, because of all of these you know, chemicals, reduces your body's ability to really fight infections. You have lots of you know, reduced immune responses because of it. Um, and this is, of course, it gets worse, you know, with the excess weight that you add on. Um, and the final one is that, you know, the ACE2 receptors that we've talked about before, um, you know, that's how the virus gets into the body is because it really attaches to those receptors. You actually have more of them expressed in fat cells. Um, so the more you have, that's the more- really fascinating part of this to me because you're literally growing more Velcro for the virus, right, to attach itself to when you gain weight. And yet a lot of us are gaining weight. Let's let's be honest, like the quarantine 15 is no joke. So we're kind of then increasing our risk factor. It's even more motivation to try to do what we can to eat clean and exercise, even if it's push-ups in your basement, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, movement is such an important part of staying healthy because it keeps your lungs going, it keeps your heart healthy, and it keeps your immune system going. I mean, one of the best parts about exercise is that it really gets your immune system healthy. We've talked about um, uh, diabetes and comor comorbidities, but we've never talked about obesity being comorbidity. Uh, your thoughts on that? And I know it's not easy to pin it down, but what do you think? I think part of the problem is that, you know, we debated it a lot at the beginning of this outbreak. Uh, in fact, back in April, the French actually warned us, hey, we're seeing worse outcomes in our patients that are obese. We're worried about countries with higher obesity rates like America. And then there was a lot of backlash here saying, oh, no, that can't possibly be it. It must be other things. It must be underlying conditions. It must be, you know. Wait, I think you're telling me that American denial is part of the equation here. <laughs> a little That's bit. That's astonishing. Wow. <laughs> so, we're not, so we're not willing to admit that we have a problem that begets another problem. That's fascinating because it feels like we know that our rates are higher, like the French are saying, or we're saying, trying to warn us. I mean, I, I think you, you and I have just talked about a Lancet, Lancet study that's come out fairly recently. Um, our obesity rates are like 40%. The, the yeah. Chinese are at like 6%. Right. And they had a lot of people die of COVID, even without that. So then add that risk factor on top. And, you know, it just, <clears throat> and, and unfortunately, you can see the pictures of people who've passed on. Sometimes that is a factor that we're not talking about. Right. And I do think we need to talk about it more. I mean, that Lancet study you mentioned you know, they looked at 50 different countries and they found that obesity rates within the whole population were the driving factor as to not only the number of cases of COVID, but also the mortality rate, you know, and the U.S. has one of the highest rates of obesity out there. I think I was just looking at, um, I believe it was the Hopkins study. Mm. They were saying it's something like, I think we're in the top 10 of all the countries in the world for would not obesity. surprise me at all. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's something that we don't like talking about. I mean, we have a culture where we really just don't talk about obesity. We don't talk about people with excess weight and what that can really do to you um, for a number of reasons. And, you know, there's also this disparity between groups, you know, people who maybe can't afford fresh food, they're living on processed food. They're going to have excess weight. And then, 
unfortunately, that means they're at higher risk for all these problems with COVID. So it's definitely a complex issue with a lot of different factors in it. Well, uh, in, in a way, it also explains some of the, the tendencies for urban areas, not just because they're closer together and it's easier for them to catch it, but because they live in smaller spaces, which is harder to exercise. They Some of the, some areas of cities don't have good access, as you mentioned, to fresh uh, produce and unprocessed foods. I mean, we've talked about um, the grocery store droughts in certain communities, and that's a factor too. If you can't get the means to be healthy, then you're also not in a good position to be more resistant to COVID-19. Exactly. And that's why this is such a difficult issue. And it's something I'm glad we're talking about now, and hopefully we can get some more answers on. I hope they'll continue the research, and I know you'll be on top of it. Amanda Kawochi there from the Health and Wealth Bulletin. And if you would like to be connected directly to the Health and Wealth Bulletin, which is a free publication, you can hover on your screen right now, and we'll connect you to it. Also, please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.